Hello, Bloodstream listeners, Patrick here, and welcome back for your daily dose of Bloodstream during Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month, also known as March. Yesterday, we provided an overview of Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month's history, and today we'll take a look at one of the major players in bleeding disorders as we pose the question, what is hemophilia? But speaking of bleeding disorders first, though, bleedingdisorders.com is where you can go to learn more about Bloodstream's presenting sponsor, Takeda. Just wanted to mention that real quick, and hey, thanks, Takeda. So hemophilia. Let's first start with the basics. Hemophilia A, also called factor VIII deficiency or classic hemophilia, is a genetic disorder caused by missing or defective factor VIII clotting protein. Hemophilia B, also called factor IX deficiency or Christmas disease, though it has nothing to do with the holiday, is likewise a genetic disorder caused by missing or defective factor IX clotting protein. Although each are passed down from parents to children, about one-third of the cases have no previous family history. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, Hemophilia occurs in approximately 1 in 5,600 live male births. You might recall yesterday's episode where I read President Reagan's proclamation that referred to 1 in 4,000 live male births. Keep in mind, that was 30 years ago, and we're constantly learning more about prevalence. There are between 30 and 33,000 males with hemophilia in the United States. More than half of people with diagnosed hemophilia A have the severe form of the disease, producing less than 1% of the clotting factor protein. Hemophilia A is four times more common as hemophilia B, and both hemophilia A and B affect all races and ethnic groups. So let's talk about the genetics. Both hemophilia A and B, as mentioned, are inheritable, meaning that they are passed down from parents to children. The X and Y chromosomes are called sex chromosomes. The gene for hemophilia is carried on the X chromosome. Hemophilia is inherited in an X-linked recessive manner. Females inherit two X chromosomes, one from their mother and one from their father, making up XX. Males inherit an X chromosome from their mother and a Y chromosome from their father, XY. That means if a son inherits an X chromosome carrying hemophilia from his mother, he will have hemophilia. It also means that fathers cannot pass hemophilia on to their sons. But because daughters have two X chromosomes, even if they inherit the hemophilia gene from their mother, most likely they will inherit a healthy X chromosome from their father and not have hemophilia. A daughter who inherits an X chromosome that contains the gene for hemophilia is called a carrier. She can pass the gene on to her children. Many women who carry the hemophilia gene also have low factor expression, which can result in heavy menstrual bleeding, easy bruising, and joint bleeds. Some women who have the hemophilia gene have factor expression low enough to be diagnosed with hemophilia. For a female carrier, there are four possible outcomes for each pregnancy. One, a girl who is not a carrier. Two, a girl who is a carrier. 3. A boy without hemophilia. 4. A boy with hemophilia. Now we talked about severity just a few moments ago, and how about 60% of all people with hemophilia have the severe form with less than 1% of clotting protein. Moderate hemophilia, which represents about 15% of the cases, means an individual produces between 1 and 5% of the clotting factor protein, while mild hemophilia, which affects approximately a quarter of all cases, means a person is producing between 6 and 30% of the clotting factor protein. So how is hemophilia treated? Well, most treatments for hemophilia focus on replacing the missing protein, either factor 8 in the case of hemophilia A or factor 9 in the case of hemophilia B. This way, a person can form a clot and reduce or eliminate bleeds that are associated with the disorder. Treatments that work to prevent bleeding through new mechanisms have recently come to the market or are in clinical trials. The main medication to treat hemophilia is concentrated factor VIII, called clotting factor or simply factor. There are two types of clotting factor, plasma-derived and recombinant. Plasma-derived factor is made from human plasma. Recombinant factor products are developed in a lab through the use of DNA technology. 
while plasma-derived Factor A products are still available, approximately three-quarters of the hemophilia community takes a recombinant Factor VIII product. There are also different kinds of Factor VIII products. There are what we call the standard half-life products, those that have been around for a little longer, and then the more recently developed extended half-life products, which enable the factor protein that is put into the system to remain functional in the system for a longer period of time, hence extended half-life. These factor therapies are injected into a vein, we call this an infusion, usually in the arm or the hand or maybe through a port in the chest. The National Hemophilia Foundation's Medical and Scientific Advisory Council, MASAC, encourages the use of recombinant clotting factor products over plasma-derived because they are safer from blood-borne viruses and diseases. There's more to dig into there for those who are interested. Now, to maintain enough clotting factor in the bloodstream to prevent bleeds, patients with severe hemophilia are typically prescribed a regular treatment regimen called prophylaxis, or PROFI for short. This means a person will infuse their medication on a regular schedule. For example, every day or every other day, depending on how long the factor lasts in the body. MASAC recommends prophylaxis as optimal therapy for all people with severe hemophilia. New treatments that use other ways of preventing bleeds are also available. These treatments are known as non-factor replacement therapies. One available therapy for people with hemophilia A is emicizumab, a laboratory-engineered protein that works by performing a key function in the clotting cascade that is normally carried out by the factor VIII protein. It can be prescribed for routine prophylaxis to prevent or reduce the frequency of bleeding episodes in adults and children of all ages, newborn and older, with hemophilia A with and without factor VIII inhibitors. Emicizumab is not infused, but injected under the skin subcutaneously. There's one more form of hemophilia that we need to mention, and it often gets left out of conversations about hemophilia, and that's hemophilia C, or factor 11 deficiency. Hemophilia C is usually hereditary and affects both genders equally. In rare cases, it can be acquired due to another disease state, such as lupus. After von Willebrand disease, hemophilia A and hemophilia B Hemophilia C is the fourth most common bleeding disorder and is thought to affect about 1 in 100,000 of the adult population. Unlike other bleeding disorders, hemophilia C occurs more predominantly in one demographic, Jewish people of Ashkenazi or Eastern European descent, where it is estimated to affect 8% of the population. Joint and muscle bleeds are not common with hemophilia C. Hemophilia C symptoms can vary and might not be related to your factor 11 level, and bleeds may occur after surgery, dental procedures, or a trauma, but bleeding tendencies are unpredictable and inconsistent. You can learn more about hemophilia A, B, and C on NHF's Steps for Living platform through the Hemophilia Federation of America's Bleeding Disorders 101 webpage, or by going to thesciencefair.org and taking a tour of Believe Limited's Virtual Science Fair for Bleeding Disorders. Links for all three sites can be found in the program notes for this episode. And that, in a short summary, answers the question, what is hemophilia? Special thanks to the National Hemophilia Foundation, Hemophilia Federation of America, and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for the information cited on today's episode, and that will do it for today. So join me again tomorrow as we next explore the wonderful world of von Willebrand disease. Thank you for listening. Thanks again to our presenting sponsor, Takeda. And until tomorrow, take self-care of yourself. Bye, everybody.